I'm Xanderwood. I make indie games and tutorials on game development. I also play your indie games every week on my channel. Make sure you subscribe and click that bell icon so you never miss a video. Welcome back. Before we get into the video, just a massive shout out to my Patreon supporters, James Welch, Basic Terror, Cole, Tomorrow Alexic Zan, Retro Galaxy, Clone13, Foozle CC, Jet Simon, Olivier Bernier, Fan Van, Alex Fedorov, Arto Wajaz, and Amari Lewis. Thanks very much guys for supporting my game dev journey. And if you want to be part of the Patreon family, you can check out all the benefits that you get, including free pixel art, free music, free tile sets, and game packs on a monthly basis. There is a link in the description if you want to check that out. Hey guys, welcome back to Castlevania episode 6, remaking Castlevania episode 6, that is, and in the last episode we had an issue. We had an issue where, as if we walked through the door, the camera would tween nicely over to here, and then we would continue walking, but if we came backwards, then everything would go and get all messed up. Uh, and in this episode we're going to fix it. So let's go back to the event sheet, and the first thing we need to do is change this cam zone and I want to say cam zone, and I want to add in a plus 16 pixels. <clears throat> so effectively what that's going to do is instead of having it overlapping here, it's going to move it one square along to here so it will no longer be overlapping. And I also want to add in an ID to the cam zone and the door. So we're going to add an instance variable. We're going to call it ID. It's going to stay at zero. And um, we're going to do another, we're going to click on the cam zone here and we're going to go instance variable. We're going to add another one. It's going to be ID again and it's going to be zero. So effectively what you'll have is an instance variable on the door which says ID zero and again one on the cam zone which says ID zero. Now if I copy these and bring them out to here, we're going to have an issue. So if I play the game, I'm going to show you what that is. And again, this is something we're going to fix over the next few minutes as well. So we can tween all the way over to there, and then I can come through. But when I hit this one, you can see the camera wants to tween back to the first cam zone. So it doesn't recognize which one. And this is going to be an issue if we've got multiple doors in the game, because the camera now is not going to really know where it needs to go. Um, and that is, you know, hence the reason for these IDs. So with your second set of, uh, of cam zones and doors, we're going to change the ID to one on both. Now it's very important that the door that corresponds to the camera zone has the exact same ID number. And we can have as many of these as we want to in the game. This one will be zero, this one will be one and so on and so on. Now going back to the event sheet, we need to add a condition to this event here. So just click on the player on collision with door and push C on the keyboard. And we're going to now compare the ID of that cam zone. The ID. And what we want it to be is the ID of the door because we're not going to know which one we're colliding with at any given time. We just want to make sure that whichever one it is, it's the same ID that the door has. So now we've got, when we collide with the door, as long as the cam zone ID is the same as the door ID, which it is, remember, because it's always going to be 0 to 0 and 1 to 1, then we can go ahead and run these actions down here. Now, I'm going to add another event to the doors, which compares the X position of the player. So we're going to say player, and we're going to compare X, and we're going to say if the X position is greater than, and we're going to say cam zone, Dot x. So if we've gone past it to the right, effectively what that means. So we've gone too far. If we've gone more than the cam zone's width to the right, then we're going to add a sub event and we're going to pick that cam zone that's nearest to the player. And it's always going to be the one that we've just gone past because of that will be the nearest one. And it will be the player's x, uh, base x position. Remember, the base is the square that is controlling all of our movement. Uh, that should be Y. So we're going to pick the nearest one, and then what we're going to do is go ahead and destroy it. That way, it's not going to be an issue when we walk back the other way. Now, if we play that, when we go through the door, camera lurps, sorry, tweens to the right, we can now walk within it, no problem, deletes it, get to the next one, same thing, go back, deletes it. We can go back now through the game because all the doors have been unlocked. And that's going to now solve our problem. 
What I want to do next is something a little bit more with the aesthetics. Is It's been annoying me this whole time, the whip. It needs to have a white outline on it. And if you've already added this in in your game, then good on you. Uh, but I'm going to add it in on mine. Um, I think it's just going to go there. It needs to have... I think it'll be okay on the back one there. Or maybe I should just move the player one to the to the right. It's not going to be too much of a problem. There you go. Whip. And then same again here. And this just makes it much more consistent. Feel free to skip ahead. You're also going to see the whip oh, a lot better. And that one is going to be a direct repeat of the first one. So I'm just going to copy and paste the first one in, pop it back there. And I'm going to make all of these ones just so it's not jumping from left to right. I shorten the whip slightly and move it to the right one. I could just do that. Seems to be a bit of a bug in Construct that doesn't always put the frame in. You can see I've just pasted it in there and it's not showing up. I don't know why that is. I think that's a bug in Construct. So I'm going to close out of it and go back into it. Go back to the whip, paste it in again, and there it is. And I just now, now need to move this guy one to the right. And now he f stands in the right place. And that is just for me, really. So now when we go through the doors, there is one final little bug we need to fix with the doors before we can move on. And that is if we go to the right, the camera finishes, but then we change our mind and go back left again, it snaps right back to us. So if you look at him going through the door, in the original, the camera tweens over, he walks through, then the camera tweens again, and then the movement becomes enabled. And that is what we need to add in next. And that's going to stop the player from having too much control and being able to kind of change their mind midway through. It's kind of like once they've gone through the door, they've then gone through the door. So we're going to change our events slightly. So what we've got going on at the moment is after the camera is tweened over, after two seconds, we reactivate the player's controls. We don't now want to do that. So we're going to need to make the player, we're going to force the player through the door. So we're going to add an action and we're going to say uh, player base and we are going to go down to simulate control and we're going to simulate control right. Um, and this is going to need to be on an every tick because if we just simulate control, control right here in this line of events or actions, it's, I'll show you, it's just going to kind of move a, a kind of a tiny, tiny amount. It's going to do it for one frame. Yeah, you probably didn't even see it, but it's literally one fraction of a, a second that it's going to do it for. So what we need to do now is put another state in play. So we're going to go system, we're going to not compare, Yes, we're going to compare and we're going to say state and we're going to add in that transitioning. That transitioning state. So if he's transitioning, then sub event system every tick. We need to perform that action pressing right. And then after we've waited two seconds here, then we can go system set value of that that global state to transitioning. Now, 
when we play, he should infinitely walk to the right, which we don't want, but let's just check to see if it works. Yeah, so now he walks forever. So we need to stop it. I'm gonna put a little marker down, a visual cue. So I'm gonna double click and I'm gonna create a sprite and I'm gonna make it 16 by 16. I'm just gonna color it green. It doesn't have to be any particular color. The origin point is gonna to be top left. And I'm just gonna pop that there, just to the outside. And I'm gonna call this one stopper. I'm gonna drag another one out over here. And we're gonna go back to player events. And under, I think, camera controls, we're gonna say player on collision with stopper. Uh, No, I don't think so. I think I'm going to add it as a condition in transitioning. I'm going to push C on the keyboard and I'm going to say player is overlapping another object. I'm going to say stopper and I'm going to invert that. So if the state's equal to transitioning, but we're not overlapping a stopper, then we're going to press right. And that should just stop him now when we get to that stopper point. So we're going to tween the camera in, moves him across and then he stops, uh, but I don't have control again. So we're gonna need to now add another event. We can add it into the movement. We're gonna say player on collision with another object, stopper. And this is where we're gonna need to set controls active. So we can drag a copy out and I'm gonna say activate and then that should enable us to continue moving. Tweens across. Perfect. Can't control that, but now I can. Um, but I think I want to move the stopper just one position to the right. So it's just where the camera is. And yeah, the camera image points in the, in the center. So double click. I'm just going to centralize the image point for the stopper and move it across one there. And I think maybe one more there, just so he's cleared that. So that will automatically disappear. So now when I go to the door, I'm not touching the keyboard. I'm not touching anything that disappears and I've got player controls back again. Although, because I was facing the wrong way, and I'm still overlapping at that stopper. So we need to destroy the stopper on contact. So, player on collision with stopper. Let's add a sub-event, and we're going to say stopper. And we're going to say pick nearest to player, player base, dot x, player base, dot y. And the nearest stopper to the player is going to get, oh, is going to get destroyed. That way we don't have to worry about it again. It's not going to destroy all of them. It's just going to destroy the one that we've touched. Although if you have your doors further apart than this, it, it typically wouldn't really make a difference, but it's fine. Um, for some reason, it didn't play the animation. Just to make sure that he's in that walking animation is here. I need to set the state to walk. So I just copied that out from the movement up here. That's all we need to put in there because we've already established that if we're in a walk state, it's going to play the appropriate animation. Uh, no, that's setting the animation to play. Um, we could do that, but I think I just want to, I want to change the state. So I want to grab the state from up here and I'm going to drag it down and pop it there. And now that should just, that should just play my, play my state. Uh, but changing that state for some reason now makes him not want to move across. So that's probably not a good idea. Let's just change the animation. I oh, know because we're setting it every tick. That's why. Let's just set it once to walk. There we go. 
There we go. And he's back. Perfect. I am pretty happy with the way that is. I just want to try and crouch before the door like I did before. There we go. And he gets up and walks. Perfect. Get down and crouch. And away he goes. Perfect. That now is working exactly how I want it to work. We can transition through doors into other rooms, which is going to make us... Um, it's going to give us the ability to break up this first layout into different rooms that we can explore. Um, in the next episode, we may tackle stairs because obviously in the original game, there are multiple levels that we can go. Well, not multiple levels, but there are stairs that we can go up and down. So let's maybe give that a try. Uh, in the meantime, though, have a uh, great day and I'll see you in the next episode.